Firmware 2.0 for the Z8. Will it elevate the camera to new heights or is it just going to be another case of overhyped promises? Stick around to find out. If you've been in the photography game for a little while, you will know that the biggest criticism of Nikon mirrorless cameras in the past has been their autofocusing performance. I've had my fair share of frustrations in the field as well, especially when it comes to shooting subjects against water or busy backgrounds like trees. A few months ago, firmware 4.1 was released for the Z9 and photographers, especially bird enthusiasts, rejoiced at the improved autofocusing performance thanks to the new bird detection mode. Now the burning question for all of us Z8 users was, will this new technology trickle down into the Z8 and will it make a significant difference? Well, I've got some exciting news for you. Firmware 2.0 will not only bring enhanced autofocus and bird detection mode to the Z8, but will also bring some features that you can't even find in the Z9. I've been putting the Z8 with the new firmware through its paces and the results have been impressive and somewhat surprising. And trust me, you won't want to miss my insider tips in this video on maximizing the settings for optimal autofocusing performance. Let me start by giving credit where it's due. Nikon has been the only brand basically that has been consistently updating and significantly improving their cameras to firm updates. Many brands only do minor tweaks, whereas Nikon has been adding a lot of new features and also consistently improved the performance of the cameras. I think that's a great way to deal with your customers. Take this latest firmware update for example, not only are we getting the bird detection mode and improved autofocus, but also lots of other great features. Like pixel shift for instance, where you can take anywhere from 4 to 32 RAW files and later on stitch them together in the Nikon software, giving you files up to 180 megapixels in size, with much better noise levels and also much nicer to look at fine detail. I tried this feature a few times but it has been pretty windy here and I've also been shooting a lot of animals and whenever something moves while you're taking the images that are about to be stitched together, it doesn't really work as well anymore. So I've only had limited use for this feature but I know if you're for instance shooting landscapes or know that you need to print large or you're shooting products and now they're going to be on a billboard, in this case having the ability to have large clean files with great detail is perfect. One new feature that I really enjoyed and instantly used is the ability to now select the border width of your autofocusing fields. In the past, it has been sometimes difficult to see, for instance, the red or the green autofocusing fields on your viewfinder, whereas now with a slightly thicker border, they're actually much easier to see. Of the three settings that you can select from now, I prefer setting two. It's slightly wider and larger and allows me to basically see the autofocusing field at all times without being too thick where it sometimes covers too much of your subject. Us video shooters have also gotten a bunch of nice updates and the ones that stood out the most for me were that you can now assign the high res zoom to the control ring so it's nice and easy to zoom in and out and there's also more settings, more steps available now for the high res zoom that allows you to select how smoothly you can zoom with the ring. I think that's a great addition and what I also really enjoyed in the field especially on some of the bright sunny days that I was shooting in is that you can now have low eyes all modes when shooting in log. That means if you're shooting on a really bright day and you don't have an ND filter with you, for instance, you can now lower your ISO from the normal standard 800 to lower settings that will allow you to get some not as fast shutter speeds. On top of that, the Z8 now also has the awesome auto capture feature you already know from the Z9, but there you can only use it in the full frame mode, whereas on the Z8, you can now also use it in the DX crop mode. So in photo and video, you can set it to the auto capture and then whenever a subject enters your frame, the camera will automatically start recording, but this time around, not only in full frame, but also crop mode. Of course, there's tons more great features coming to the Z8 in this firmware update, and I just wanted to highlight a few that I found the most important. And whether you're using a Z8 or a Z9 with a new firmware or old firmware or different brand altogether, one of the best ways to improve your photography is to learn image editing and become more confident when it comes to image editing. And I would love to help you with that with my Pro Sets, Brush Pack and Masterclass. With my Pro Sets, I allow you with just one click to transform your RAW files and in my Masterclass and with my Brush Pack, I teach you step by step everything you need to know in Photoshop to get amazing results. So if that's of interest to you, make sure to check this out down there in the description. And now I think it's time to actually see how the camera performed with the new firmware in the field. Whenever I've used the Z8 in the past, I set it up in a certain way that gave me the best results, but it wasn't quite the way I actually wanted to use the camera. Until now, I've always had my base autofocusing mode as a wide area large with tracking, and then on another button, 3D tracking, and on the front button, I had the spot autofocus assigned. 
And whenever a bird ended up my frame, I would find it with the white area and then hand over to the 3D tracking. That worked quite well in the field, but it was obviously always a bit tedious having to press two buttons to achieve the best focusing in the field. What I really wanted to use but didn't work too reliably in the past is the auto area autofocus because that will allow me to just press one button and the camera in theory at least will find the bird all over the viewfinder. I used spot autofocus as my base autofocusing mode so I can move the autofocus field around and focus on whatever I want. And then on the AF on button I assigned auto area AF. So whenever I press that the camera will find the bird all over the viewfinder and track it hopefully at least. And then just for emergencies, if I need it, I assign 3D tracking to the display button. So now I have the camera set up basically the same way as I use on my R5 and my R3 and other mirrorless cameras. And for me, that's the best way to use them in the field. Having a spot autofocus to focus on whatever you want and then press one button in the rear and the camera will instantly jump onto your subject and track it. When I first tried out how the camera works in this new setup, I was pleasantly surprised because it was so much easier to use and so much more fun to use because instead of having the true buttons and handing over the autofocus, I can just press one button now and it should jump on the bird. And at least on my very first test in my backyard, it did very well with that new setup. If you want to help your camera to get the best autofocusing results, it's important that you pre-focus as much as possible on your subjects. If you don't pre-focus at all, it will happen quite often that the autofocus will jump straight onto the background, whereas with pre-focusing, this almost doesn't happen. Before we fully jump into the performance of the autofocus though, here's one word of warning. Now that we have bird detection mode, if you want to photograph birds or something else for that matter, you have to select the right detection mode. Because when I got the Z8 this time around, I loaded all my old settings onto the camera and changed in stilts mode to subject detection birds. However, in video mode, I forgot to change over. And when I started to film, it was still set onto animals. And I thought the camera was broken because it just could not really follow the birds anymore. And I thought, how is that possible? In the past, the autofocus has been so amazing in video mode and now it can't find anything. And then it dawned on me that I had forgotten to change over to birds. And the moment I changed over to birds, it would find the birds even in the tall grass and track them perfectly well. So make sure to select the right subject when it comes to the detection mode. I got the camera just one day after I arrived back from my seven week road trip and the first spot I took it to was a paddock near my house where people had seen some banded lapwings. I was quite excited about that because I never photographed these birds before. And when I got there the birds were only very far in the distance and I was a little bit disappointed because I really wanted to photograph them. So I sat down, just played on my phone a little while, did some tests with the camera and suddenly the birds actually started to walk towards me and almost walked right up into my camera and so I was able to take some nice photos and videos with the Z8, the 600mm PF lens and the 1.4 extender. And because the birds stayed around, I was also able to grab my Canon setup with an R5 600mm RF f4 lens and the 1.4 and 2 times extender. And I was actually able to shoot these two side by side. And the first thing I noticed with the Nikon combo was that the autofocus had definitely improved because the birds were walking through tall grass and they were actually not that large in my frame at the beginning. But the camera didn't seem too distracted by the grass at all and nicely jumped onto the bird right away. And if we look at the side by side with the R5, it was basically impossible to tell a difference between the two. And that's definitely a big improvement on the Nikon side. Now this wasn't exactly a super challenging test for the autofocus, but overall I was quite impressed after the first day and it gave me the confidence also that my new setup with the auto area autofocus actually seemed to work quite well. The biggest struggle I had in the past with the Z8, especially in my very first review of the camera, was photographing seagulls and ospreys against a water background from a cliff. Oftentimes the camera would simply not be able to find the bird fast enough and I would just miss a lot of shots. And I'm happy to say that this has dramatically improved. I actually couldn't believe how much better the autofocus was in this regard. Once it becomes really small, it jumps off, but that's to be expected. But compared to how it was previously, it's now dramatically better. And I don't have the issue anymore that the camera doesn't really know what I want to focus on. Now with the new bird detection mode, it actually is almost glued to the bird even against that busy water. And check out these shots of the Osprey flying against a basically identically colored background. And even here the camera was not distracted and would nicely stay on the bird. Now of course not every shot was sharp and with the auto area AF I noticed that from time to time the camera would jump off my subject for two or three frames in a burst and then jump on back to the bird. So that wasn't ideal but all in all the results were I'd say almost spectacular compared how it struggled before. 
Encouraged by these first tests, I decided to take the camera to a cattle eagle rookery to do some more flight shooting. If you've never actually been to an eagle rookery, it's quite the sight and smell. And I'm always amazed how rough these baby egrets are with their parents and that no one seems to lose an eye even though there's these sharp beaks going everywhere. When I got there first, I decided I changed my settings back to the old white area tracking that had given me the best flight results in the past. But after just a little while, I decided to go back to my new settings because the autofocus with the auto area AF just seemed to be a bit more sticky and also lots faster when jumping onto the bird. With the wide area tracking, there always seemed to be a slight delay and it struggled more if the bird wasn't already perfectly pre-focused on. Whereas with the auto area AF, the autofocus also found a bird if it wasn't fully sharp yet and also instantly jumped onto a bird whenever I pressed the buttons. So for flight shooting, the auto area I have with the new firmware has definitely been a major improvement. It makes it so much easier and so much more fun to do birds in flight with that camera. Just like with the water background, not every single photo was sharp and sometimes the camera would kind of jump off the bird and back onto the bird, but I definitely got by far the most and best results I've ever gotten with the Z8. Another area where Nikon mirrorless cameras seem to struggle a lot in the past is when you transition from the sky background to a tree background. Oftentimes, just when the birds would fly from the sky in front of the trees, the focus would jump onto the background. And this also doesn't seem to happen anymore with the new firmware, which is also a dramatic improvement. So was it all amazing? Well, I definitely had some struggles as well, especially when I was trying to photograph head portraits of the beautiful egrets in the trees. For some reason, the Z8, and I think I've seen some videos on that on the Z9 as well, doesn't seem to like focusing on herons and egrets. I don't know what it is. The overlay of the autofocus is actually right on the eye, but the focus is usually on the beak or on the neck or the back of the bird, so nowhere really near where the overlay is. And this doesn't really happen with other birds. If I'm photographing this black swan, for instance, all the three different autofocusing modes, auto area after 3D tracking and the spot autofocus, give me great results. Whereas on an egret, basically all the modes except for the spot autofocus seem to jump on and off and struggle with giving me the perfect sharpness on the eye. So I don't really know why this is happening. Maybe the shape of the bird with the long neck and the long beak is kind of throwing off the camera. But to get reliable and sharp results, the only mode that worked properly for me was the spot autofocus. If I put the spot autofocus on the eye, basically all the shots were sharp. Whereas all the automatic modes, 3D tracking, wide area or the area I have, struggle to stay on the eye of the egret and jump onto the tip of the beak or somewhere on the back of the bird. This is a good reminder though why I have different autofocusing modes assigned to different buttons on the back of the camera. Whenever I notice in the field that one of the autofocusing modes doesn't really work and doesn't give me the best results, I can quickly go to 3D tracking or the spot autofocus and still get amazing results. So having all the different modes assigned to different buttons definitely helps to always get sharp results with different modes if one mode seems to fail in a certain situation. Another challenge I wanted to put the camera through was photographing small chestnut-breasted mannequins in tall grass. These tiny birds always land on the top of the grass stem and then kind of bend it down and they're often covered by different grass stems. And this is definitely an area where a lot of autofocusing systems get confused. And overall, the autofocus basically got never distracted by the grass and I got some nice photos and also some nice videos. And I must say, here in the video mode, the camera also tracked the birds exceptionally well because oftentimes, Especially in video mode, a lot of cameras will get distracted by the grass really easily, but the Z8 in this case was not distracted by the grass at all and gave me some beautiful videos as well. One thing I noticed though that with these little birds and also with the perch birds in general, the 3D tracking sometimes gave me better and more consistent results than the auto area F that I was using. The auto area F was amazing for birds in flight and action and definitely gave me the best results there, whereas for perch birds and especially these small birds, the 3D tracking sometimes gave me more consistent and more accurate results. So oftentimes I would find a bird with the auto area AF, but then at times switch over to the 3D tracking if it's a perch bird that's just sort of sitting in front of me. The auto area AF works well there as well, but sometimes it just seems to be jumping on and off a little bit. So overall, I must say the autofocus improvements are quite dramatic. Not only because the camera tracks better in the autofocusing modes and finds the subjects more reliable, but also because I find it much more fun and easier to use the camera now. In the past, where I had to use wide area and 3D tracking to get the best results, it was a lot more tedious to use the camera, whereas now in most situations, I can simply press one button, use the auto area AF, and the camera finds the bird good enough. 
In certain difficult situations, like with the herons or small birds against the grass or certain perch birds, the 3D tracking or the spot autofocus still had an advantage over the auto area AF, but in most situations, the auto area AF was more than good enough and gave me fantastic results. And that really made me enjoy the camera more because I could simply just press one button and get great results. When it comes to the overall subject recognition, that was another area in the past where the camera struggled at times, and this has also definitely improved. If the bird is still very small in the frame, and depending on the bird species, it can still struggle at times, but anything that's reasonably large in your frame, the camera doesn't seem to have any issues anymore. Compared to other manufacturers, especially in video mode, I think the Z8 probably has by far the best autofocus now, especially for birds. And the overall autofocus is also pretty good and right on par with like a Canon R5, for instance. There will be certain situations where one camera is better than the other or one camera will struggle with like the Herons or Egret, for instance. But overall, I think the Z8 has made a dramatic step in the right direction. It is much more enjoyable to use in the field. It was good in the past, but now it's definitely much improved and much easier to use. So if your current Z8 user updating to firmware 2.0 is basically a no-brainer and I would do it right away. And if you're on the edge whether the Z8 might be the right camera or not for you, I think this new firmware update definitely has improved the camera dramatically and so it might be a great choice for you right now. So once you've downloaded the firmware, make sure to let me know in the comments how you're going with it, how you're finding it. And also give me a thumbs up for this video, check out my channel membership and hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in a new video very soon. Bye.